A YouTube manometer like this one takes advantage of having two different fluids or more inside tubes and taking advantage of the density differences between those fluids and the difference in elevation that's produced by applying different pressures to either end of the tube to make a pressure measurement. So the key things are that we have different fluids, that they don't mix, that the boundaries are visible, and that we know what the densities are of each of the fluids. So the density of the manometer uh, fluid and the densities of any other fluids that happen to be in the tubing system. If we measure the heights with a ruler, then we can use fluid statics to figure out what is the difference between the pressure at location one and the pressure at location four. That's the key question we'd like to answer in order to make a pressure measurement. And we'll look at some practical measurements a little later, later on. In order to solve this problem, we need to assume that the whole thing is static so that we can use delta P equal to rho GH. Having made that assumption, we can figure out the pressure at 2 in terms of the pressure at 1. So P2 will be equal to P1, and because it's lower in elevation, the pressure will go up. So it'll be a positive sign there, plus the density of fluid 1, which is what's in the tube right here, times gravity, times the height at 1 minus the height at 2. So we're making that all positive values, and we'll see an increase in the pressure from 1 to 2. We can figure out what P3 is in terms of P2. And we're going around the tube this way, Following a continuous fluid, it's this manometer fluid, whatever it might be. It might be an oil or mercury or, or a variety of things. Following it around, we know its density. We get to location three and we'll see a higher pressure because we're further down in the fluid. So we'll have a positive sign. The density of the manometer fluid times G times the difference in height between location two and location three. And finally, we can get from location 3 to location 4 through the rest of the tube and knowing that the fluid in this part of the tube is a density rho 4. We'll get that the pressure at 4 is equal to the pressure at 3. Location 4 is higher, so we're going to have a lower pressure, so a negative sign times the density of the fluid at 4 in this section of tube here times G times H4 minus H3. So keeping all of these positive, making sure we get the sign right over here by knowing what the physical situation looks like. So increase in pressure as we go down, increase in pressure as we go down further in elevation, and finally a decrease in pressure as we go up in elevation. And if we put this all together, we can sum all of this up and wind up with the pressure at four equal to the pressure at one or P4 minus P1 just being the sum of all the differences in between. So we'll have rho 1 G H1 minus H2 plus rho M G H2 minus H3 minus rho 4 G times H4 minus H3. Now it's interesting to note here that some of these height differences showed up in our final result. It's important what H4 is and H3, H2, and H1. All of those represent differences in height. But in fact, using the floor down here as our datum point, we're really only interested in differences in height along the path. So it really doesn't matter how far down it is to the floor or how far up this upper loop goes before it comes back down to location four. If it went way up here and came back down, our equation would still be the same. So it's interesting that the HU, the height of the U2 off the floor down here, doesn't matter. The height of this bend that goes up doesn't matter. The only thing that we're interested in is the differences in height. 
So we can take this general idea of how a YouTube manometer functions and apply it to some specific applications a, a little bit later. That'll allow us to make practical measurements using typically liquid levels in the manometer to be able to detect differences in pressures. This makes a good calibration tool because the difference of a couple of millimeters of liquid is a very small pressure difference and we can use this to calibrate our uh, electronic sensors. YouTube manometers give us a practical application where we can take what we know about fluid statics following along a path through a fluid that isn't moving to determine pressure differences and draw some useful conclusions for practical measurements.